are here. They're out in full force. I guess they're expecting or being prepared for any trouble. And uh, hopefully this will be a peaceful demonstration. Again, this isn't a protest against police. It's against police brutality and the police who abuse their authority to break the law rather than upholding the law. Dundas Square, and we were shooting stuff, uh, you know, that's... One, two, that's that, like that, that's you, one, two. One, two, check. One, two, check, 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 one, two. Protest brutality that is uh, that they experience against the police. I just want to start by uh, pointing something out first. Before I've worked in this neighborhood for 20 years, uh, this station actually wasn't here before. It was over in Regent Park. Has a lot of history. 51 Division with poor people. Some of it very, very nasty history. 
I won't go into a lot of it, but uh, most of these cops would know about Cherry Beach, which is just down the road here. The name Thomas Kerr might ring a bell for D Platoon, with the, which was suspended when they kicked the shit out of him. I mean, there's a lot of history here. Our community up to the north here experiences target policing on a, on a daily basis. Tavis is, has been here, Project 35, Project 40, community action policing, all of that. But what is disturbing today in particular is this massive presence of police in front of 51 Division for such a small demonstration, given that if you go up there, there are social agencies right now who have to decide what to cut. Every one of those agencies have been told that they have to cut by 5%. So my question to Rob Ford is, where is this money coming from? How is it that they can spend all this money today to protect this building here while people starve and don't have enough food to eat and don't have enough housing to the north here? How does that happen? So we're here to talk about poverty and policing. But in the end, in the end what people have to understand is that there is chaos in poor communities. People are having a hard time. You can't leave 600 men living at Seton House by themselves without having trouble. Yeah. It's impossible. You can't leave and abandon people in parks without expecting them to have trouble. But the answer has been consistently to give us cops, more and more cops, and refusing to address the issues, which shame. are social issues. So shame on you. Shame. But worse, worse. We're now entering another period where the federal government is talking about major, major austerity cuts. They're saying they're going to make cuts everywhere. And that means that poor communities again will feel it. And the answer when, 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 when the chaos happens and when people protest like today saying, you know, all we're here to say today is we want food and we want housing. Yes. Yes. Not more of these cops. That's what we're saying. That's our message today. You know, you've been having a war on drugs for 20 years. You've been beating the shit out of people in there. Stop that shit. Yes. We want, we want you to deal with that. Hi, my name is Victoria Barnett. I'm Vic my name is Victoria. I'm here from the Community Solidarity Network. Um, the Community Solidarity Network came out of the Toronto Community Mobilization Network that formed um, around the G20. Um, the CSN has formed out of the TCMN to uh, to defend our comrades and allies who spoke out against the regressive policies of the G20. Yes! The G20 um, resulted in the largest mass arrest in Canada, which showed mainstream society that a, the, a glimpse of police violence. And this is not to exceptionalize the G20 uh, moment, but to draw out the fact that mainstream society saw a glimpse of what marginalized communities face here on a daily basis. What we continue to see now is a larger and more aggressive police presence, both in communities and at meetings or events that occur where people speak out against the police or speak out against banks and corporations or question their purpose in the first place. Save. The ongoing resistance to policing exists because we will not stand for the harassment, the violence, the intimidation, and yeah. the brutality that is perpetrated by the police. Yeah. Yeah. We gather today not just to expose the reality of repressing policing or repressive policing in targeted communities across the city, but to convey a message to them, to the police, who are all around us right now, um, that we have the will and the capacity to resist and that we will continue to do so. Yeah. Yeah. Our next speaker is uh, Harrison from the Red Power United. Harrison, are you here? All right, I'm here today to speak out. Yeah. Last year I was involved in the G20. I was the leader of the Native Resistance yeah. for Red Power United. We called for blockades on the highway. I was threatened by CSIS, the Canadian Security Intelligence Services. I had to deal with the OPP, the Toronto City Police, the RCMP, and everybody else, just like this guy here, right? So you know what? Last night, I spoke out, and I said stuff that the cops didn't like, you know? Last month, my friend Chris was killed by the Toronto City Police. He was fucking beaten down. He was beaten down. Bullshit! He got charged, got arrested, he went to jail for the weekend. He came out on Monday, Tuesday morning, his girlfriend woke him up, 
and he was dead in bed because of what happened from that beating the police gave him. Save! Last night I was on my way home, back to where I stay, and I got stopped by the police. I was with my friends. They see picked me, they ran my name. They know who I am. CSIS has a file on me. Every one of these cops know who I am. Next thing you know, they're trying to tell me I'm resisting arrest, right? Trying to tell me I'm resisting arrest. I wasn't resisting nothing. They kicked the shit out of me. I spent the night in the hospital. They're telling me I speak too much, I talk too much, you know? And look at me today. You know, I'm supposed to be in the hospital right now getting my face fixed, but I don't give a fuck about that because it's more important that I come out here and speak out against these guys. Fuck this shit. You know, it's a native land. I'm sick of being oppressed all the time by people like this. You know, what happens to our people, and not just native people, all of you, all people. You know, I see it all the time, police brutality constantly. I see it every fucking day. You know, I look at these guys and I see these guys eyeing me up. You know, I'm not going to do nothing now because everybody's standing here. But I'm standing here, and I'm standing up, and I'm fighting back, and I'm not afraid. My name's Yogi Acharya. I'm with the Migrant Justice Group, No One Is Illegal. And I guess I just want to say three stories. One is uh, a couple days ago, I was in Crescent Town, which is a predominantly Bangladeshi neighborhood, the South Asian neighborhood, marginalized economically on the east end of Toronto, right at the border of uh, Toronto and Scarborough, they were having a community safety meeting. Um, and this has sort of, we've seen this all the time, especially in Jane and Finch, increasingly so in other communities now, where it is these people who come out to those community safety meetings to tell racialized people that, you know, you're not all bad. Some of, some of you do bad things and give a bad name to your communities, but you're not all bad, you know? Like, we can work with us, work with us and we'll, I don't know, I don't know what you can do for them, uh, given that you are repressing, participating, and keeping people down in those communities every single day, when all they're asking for is childcare, when all they're asking for is access to proper jobs, when all they're asking for you not to harass them yeah. in the streets, yeah. and not to harass not? racialized youth on the streets, not to come up with names like the Toronto anti-violence strategy in the name of committing violence in communities. The other thing I wanted to say is, uh, Roughly six years and 10 days ago, on March 5th, there was a demonstration much like this one, right here in front of 51 Division. It was for the deportation of Wendy Maxwell, who was a beloved community activist and a programmer at CKLN Community Radio. She was picked up by cops from the Toronto 51 Division at CKLN when she was tabling and selling baked cookies for a fundraiser at CKLN. They came in, they picked her up, they reported her to detention authorities, immigration enforcement authorities, and she was deported shortly after. Bullshit! This this collusion between the police and immigration enforcement is not new. It has gone on for a very long time and it goes on today. Just on December 24th, a lot of us uh, were out in Parkdale where 18-year-old Daniel Garcia, an 18-year-old student from Mexico, was caught, was racially profiled on the streets when he was crossing at King and Jameson. Shame! He was racially Shame! profiled, he was ID'd, Shame! and then he was handed over to immigration enforcement. He was deported on January 1st, 2011. Shame! 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 And we're here to say that, you know, you, you're not fooling every, anyone with your rhetoric of community safety. You're not fooling anyone Shame! in racialized communities. You might get 10 or 20 people coming out. But there's 2,000 people who will be on the streets yeah! protesting you, hate you and calling Hurry you out up. for the racist and sexist people that you are. It's too bad.